The lecture hall at the prestigious Galactic Academy was abuzz with chatter as students from across the cosmos filed in for the highly anticipated xenobiology seminar. Among them was Alaria, a striking blue-skinned humanoid from the planet Azuria. With her iridescent hair and piercing violet eyes, she stood out even amidst the diverse crowd of alien scholars. Ilaria had always been fascinated by the peculiarities of alien species, but none intrigued her quite like humans. Those strange pinkish bipeds from a backwater planet called Earth had only recently made contact with the wider galactic community, yet they were already making waves with their rapid technological advancements and unpredictable behavior. As she took her seat, Ilaria couldn't help but overhear a group of human male students bantering loudly a few rows ahead. Their boisterous laughter and crude jokes made her cringe inwardly. How could a species so primitive and uncouth have gained admission to the academy? The room fell silent as Professor Rogzax, a wizened old reptilian, slithered up to the podium. Greetings, students, he rasped, his forked tongue flicking out to taste the air. Today we will be discussing the reproductive habits of various sentient species. We'll start with a rather peculiar case study, humans. Ilaria leaned forward eagerly, her pen poised over her notepad. Finally, she would get some answers about these perplexing creatures. Now, as you all know, Professor Rogzax continued, most advanced species have evolved to have specific mating seasons or cycles. This allows for efficient reproduction and ensures the survival of the species. However, humans are quite different. He tapped a button on the podium and a holographic image of a human male appeared slowly rotating for all to see. Ilaria couldn't help but blush at the sight of his muscular physique, so different from the lithe, graceful males of her own species. Human males are unique in that they are always fertile, Professor Rogzax explained. They have no mating season and are constantly driven to seek out mates. This insatiable libido is thought to be a result of their high testosterone levels and aggressive nature. Murmurs of shock and disbelief rippled through the lecture hall. Ilaria's jaw dropped open. Always fertile, constantly seeking mates? It seemed too absurd to be true. But Professor, a tentacled student interjected, wouldn't such constant mating drive be detrimental to their species? How do they find time for anything else? Ah, excellent question, Professor Rogzax nodded. While it may seem counterintuitive, this constant mating drive has actually been a key factor in human success. Their aggressive, risk-taking behavior has allowed them to explore, innovate, and conquer at an astonishing rate. Ilaria's mind reeled as she tried to process this information. She glanced over at the human males again, seeing them in a new light. Their confidence, their swagger. Was it all just a manifestation of their raging hormones? As the lecture continued, Professor Rogzax delved into the intricacies of human mating rituals and courtship behaviors. Ilaria dutifully took notes but she couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled in her stomach. The more she learned about human males, the more both repulsed and strangely drawn to them, she felt. When the seminar finally ended, Ilaria gathered up her belongings and hurried out of the lecture hall, eager to clear her head. But as she stepped into the crowded corridor, she found herself face to face with one of the human males from earlier. Up close, he was even more imposing than she had realized. He towered over her, his broad shoulders and chiseled jawline radiating an aura of raw, primal masculinity. Ilaria felt her heart race as he flashed her a cocky grin. Hey there, Blue, he said, his deep voice sending shivers down her spine. Name's Clark. Couldn't help but notice you staring at me during the lecture. Like what you see? Ilaria's cheeks flushed a deep indigo. I, I wasn't staring, she stammered, trying to regain her composure. I was just taking notes. Clark chuckled, leaning in closer. Sure you were, sweetheart. Well, if you ever want a more hands-on lesson in human anatomy, you know where to find me. With a wink, he sauntered off down the hall, leaving Ilaria breathless and more confused than ever. Part of her was disgusted by his brazen flirtation, but another part couldn't deny the electric thrill that had coursed through her at his proximity. As she made her way back to her dorm room, Ilaria's mind churned with conflicting emotions. She had always prided herself on her logical, scientific approach to life. But something about those human males awakened a primal, irrational side of her that she didn't quite understand. Flopping down on her bed, Ilaria stared up at the ceiling, trying to make sense of it all. 
She knew she should stay far away from creatures as volatile and unpredictable as humans, and yet she couldn't shake the feeling that her journey of discovery was only just beginning. Little did Ilaria know her fascination with human males would soon lead her down a path of forbidden desire, interstellar intrigue, and the ultimate question of what it truly means to be human. For in the depths of space, where species collide and passions ignite, anything is possible. Even love between a blue-skinned alien and a red-blooded human male. As Ilaria drifted off to sleep that night, her dreams were haunted by visions of chiseled jaws, cocky grins, and the promise of an adventure unlike any she had ever known. The universe, it seemed, had plans for her. Plans that would test the very limits of her mind, body, and soul. But for now, she could only wonder and wait, her heart racing with a mixture of fear and exhilaration at the thought of what lay ahead. For in the game of interspecies romance, there could be no winners or losers, only those brave enough to take the leap into the unknown and embrace the infinite possibilities of the cosmos. And so, with a final sigh of resignation, Ilaria surrendered to the sweet oblivion of sleep, knowing that when she awoke, her life would never be the same again. The human males had come to the Galactic Academy, and nothing would ever be the same, least of all, her own untamed heart. The next few weeks passed in a blur of lectures, lab work, and stolen glances across crowded hallways. Ilaria tried her best to focus on her studies, but her mind kept drifting back to Clark and his cocky grin. She couldn't explain the hold he seemed to have over her. It was like nothing she had ever experienced before. One evening, as Ilaria was leaving the library after a long study session, she found herself face to face with Clark once again. He was leaning against the wall, his arms crossed over his broad chest, looking for all the world like he owned the place. <laughs> hey there, Blue, he said, his voice low and seductive. Fancy running into you here. Ilaria felt her heart skip a beat. What do you want, Clark? she asked, trying to keep her voice steady. He pushed off from the wall and took a step toward her, his eyes smoldering with barely contained desire. I think you know exactly what I want, Ilaria, he murmured, reaching out to brush a strand of hair from her face. She shivered at his touch, her skin tingling where his fingers had grazed her cheek. I... I don't know what you're talking about, she stammered, backing away slightly. Clark chuckled a deep, rumbling sound that seemed to reverberate through her very bones. Don't play coy with me, sweetheart, he said, moving closer still. I've seen the way you look at me. You're curious about humans, about our mating habits. Alaria's eyes widened in shock. How did you? I have my ways, Clark grinned, tapping the side of his nose conspiratorially. Let's just say I'm very good at reading people especially beautiful alien women who can't keep their eyes off me. Ilaria felt her cheeks flush hot with embarrassment and something else, something primal and urgent that she didn't quite understand. I don't know what kind of game you're playing, Clark, she said, trying to regain some semblance of control over the situation. But I'm not interested. Clark's grin only widened at her words. Oh, I think you are, Blue, he said, his voice dropping to a husky whisper. I think you're very interested, and I'm going to prove it to you. Before Ilaria could react, Clark had closed the distance between them and captured her lips in a searing kiss. His mouth was hot and demanding against hers, his tongue probing insistently at the seam of her lips until she opened for him with a gasp. Ilaria's mind went blank as Clark's hands roamed over her body, his touch igniting fires in places she didn't even know existed. She knew she should push him away, should tell him to stop, but her body had other ideas. It was like he had awakened some primal, animalistic side of her that she had never known existed. When Clark finally pulled away, Ilaria was left breathless and trembling, her knees weak and her heart pounding in her chest. He grinned down at her, his eyes glittering with triumph. See, he said, his voice rough with desire. I told you you were interested. Ilaria opened her mouth to protest, but no words came out. She couldn't deny the effect he had on her, the way her body responded to his touch the way her mind went fuzzy with want whenever he was near. Clark leaned in close, his breath hot against her ear. Meet me at the observatory tonight, he whispered. Midnight, I'll show you things you've never even dreamed of. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving Ilaria standing there in the hallway, her mind reeling and her body aching for his touch. She knew she should stay away, that getting involved with a human male could only lead to trouble. But the temptation was too great to resist. 
As the hours ticked by, Ilaria tried to distract herself with studying and socializing with her alien friends. But her thoughts kept drifting back to Clark and his promise of forbidden pleasures. By the time midnight rolled around, she was a bundle of nerves and anticipation. Sneaking out of her dorm room, Ilaria made her way to the observatory, her heart pounding in her chest. When she arrived, she found Clark waiting for her, his tall frame silhouetted against the starry sky. I knew you'd come, he said, his voice low and seductive. Ilaria swallowed hard, trying to calm the butterflies in her stomach. I... I don't know what I'm doing here, she admitted, her voice trembling slightly. Clark closed the distance between them in two long strides, his hands coming up to cup her face. Yes, you do, he murmured, his thumb brushing over her lower lip. You're here because you want to be, because you want to know what it's like to be with a human male. Aloria's breath caught in her throat as Clark's lips descended on hers once more, his kiss even more passionate and demanding than before. She melted into his embrace, her body molding itself to his as if it had been made for him. As Clark's hands roamed over her curves, Ilaria let out a soft moan of pleasure. She had never felt anything like this before. The heat, the urgency, the sheer overwhelming need that consumed her. Clark's lips trailed down her neck, his teeth grazing the sensitive skin in there and sending shivers of delight down her spine. Do you want me, Ilaria? He whispered his voice rough with desire. Yes, she breathed, her hands fisting in his hair. Gods, yes. And with that, Ilaria surrendered herself to the passion and the pleasure, letting Clark take her to heights she had never known existed. Under the stars, they came together in a tangle of limbs and gasps and moans, their bodies moving in perfect sync as they chased their mutual release. When it was over, Ilaria lay in Clark's arms, her body sated and her mind spinning with the implications of what they had just done. She knew there would be consequences, that their forbidden tryst could never be anything more than a fleeting moment of passion. But as Clark held her close and whispered sweet nothings in her ear, Ilaria couldn't bring herself to care. For now, she was content to bask in the afterglow of their lovemaking, to revel in the feeling of being desired and cherished by a human male. Little did she know, their night of passion was only the beginning, the spark that would ignite a fire that would consume them both, body and soul. For in the game of love and war, there could be no winners or losers, only those brave enough to risk everything for a chance at something truly extraordinary. And so as the stars twinkled overhead and the universe spun on, Ilaria and Clark clung to each other, lost in a moment of perfect, fleeting bliss. The future was uncertain, but one thing was clear, they had started something that could never be undone, and the consequences would be felt across the galaxy for years to come. In the days that followed their passionate encounter, Ilaria found herself consumed with thoughts of Clark and the mysteries of human male physiology. She knew she should focus on her studies, but her mind kept drifting back to that night in the observatory, to the feel of Clark's hands on her body and the way he had made her feel. Finally, unable to contain her curiosity any longer, Ilaria sought Clark out after class one day. She found him lounging on the quad, his long legs stretched out in front of him as he basked in the warm sunlight. Clark, she said, her voice trembling slightly as she approached him. Can I ask you something? He looked up at her, his eyes crinkling at the corners as he grinned. Of course, Blue, he said, patting the grass beside him. Have a seat. Ilaria hesitated for a moment before lowering herself to the ground next to him, her heart pounding in her chest. I've been thinking a lot about what we learned in xenobiology class, she said, trying to keep her voice steady, about human male physiology. Clark's grin widened, his eyes sparkling with mischief. Oh, have you now? He teased, leaning in closer. And what exactly have you been thinking about, sweetheart? Ilaria felt her cheeks flush hot at his proximity, but she forced herself to press on. Well, I was wondering, is it true that human males are always fertile? that they have no mating season? Clark chuckled, his breath warm against her ear. It's true, he murmured, his voice low and seductive. We're always ready and willing, Blue. Anytime, anywhere. Ilaria shivered at his words, her body responding instinctively to his nearness. But, but how is that possible? She asked, her brow furrowing in confusion. Doesn't it get exhausting, constantly seeking out mates? Clark shrugged, his fingers playing idly with a strand of her hair. It's just the way we're wired, I guess, he said. 
We have a lot of testosterone pumping through our veins, and it drives us to pursue women pretty much constantly. Ilaria nodded slowly, trying to process this information. And what about refractory periods? She asked, her scientific curiosity getting the better of her. How long does it take for a human male to recover after mating? Clark's grin turned wicked, his eyes darkening with desire. Not long at all, sweetheart, he murmured, his hands sliding up her thigh. In fact, I could show you right now if you'd like. He leaned in closer, his breath hot against her ear. Don't tell me you've already forgotten our last time together, Blue. I seem to recall demonstrating my recovery abilities quite thoroughly. I, Loria, felt her cheeks flush at the memory, her body responding instinctively to his touch. I haven't forgotten, she murmured, her voice breathy. But I thought perhaps that was an anomaly, a fluke of human physiology. Clark chuckled, his fingers tracing maddening patterns on her skin. Oh, it was no fluke, sweetheart. That's just standard operating procedure for us human males. His grin turned devilish. But if you need a refresher course, I'm more than happy to oblige. In the name of scientific research, of course. Alaria's breath caught in her throat, her body tingling with anticipation. But she forced herself to stay focused, to remember why she had sought him out in the first place. Clark, she said, her voice trembling slightly, I'm serious. I really want to understand how human males work. Clark's expression softened, his hand stilling on her leg. I know you are, Blue, he said, his voice gentle, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. But you have to understand, for us, sex isn't just a biological function. It's a way of connecting with someone, of expressing our desires and emotions. Ilaria nodded, her heart fluttering in her chest. I think I'm starting to understand that, she said softly. But it's all so new to me. My species doesn't experience attraction the same way humans do. Clark smiled, his fingers tracing patterns on her skin. Then let me show you, he murmured, leaning in to capture her lips in a soft, tender kiss. Ilaria melted into his embrace, her hands coming up to tangle in his hair as she kissed him back. She could feel something shifting between them, a new level of intimacy and understanding that went beyond mere physical attraction. When they finally broke apart, Alaria was breathless and flushed, her heart racing in her chest. Clark, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. I think, I think I'm starting to have feelings for you. Clark's eyes widened in surprise, his expression softening into something tender and vulnerable. I think I'm starting to have feelings for you too, Blue, he said softly, his hand cupping her cheek. But we have to be careful. This, whatever this is between us, it's not going to be easy. Ilaria nodded, her eyes shining with unshed tears. I know, she said, her voice trembling, but I'm willing to try if you are. Clark smiled, his thumb brushing over her lower lip. I'm definitely willing, he murmured, leaning in to kiss her again. And so under the warm sun and the watchful eyes of the universe, Ilaria and Clark embarked on a new chapter in their relationship, one filled with tender moments, heated encounters, and a deepening emotional connection that neither of them had ever experienced before. It wouldn't be easy navigating the complexities of interspecies romance in a galaxy that was often hostile to such unions. But as they held each other close and whispered sweet nothings in each other's ears, Ilaria and Clark knew that they were willing to face any challenge to overcome any obstacle for the chance to be together. For in the end, love was the most powerful force in the universe, a force that could bridge any divide, heal any wound, and light the way through even the darkest of nights. And as long as they had each other, Ilaria and Clark knew that they could face anything the cosmos threw their way.